Well, he said 10, 15 minutes. There you go. God said a thousand years is one day. <laughs> so it's a subject to interpretation timeline. This is the second time I've been assigned a topic of conversation with a time limit. That's happened to me a few times, a few places I've been, but JP felt led of the Lord to have me speak on loneliness. That is the topic of conversation, something I've felt, and I'm sure we've all felt in our lives. And the Spirit of God obviously was with what he said. I don't like the idea of, you know, people telling you what to say, but as soon as he told me that, he's a man who walks with God, very close to God. He got a great leader here. And I, I call him a friend, I love him, and I thank God for him. But as soon as he told me that, God gave me a message for all of you. And I hope you tune in your ears. I hope you listen to what I'm about to say because this is important uh, regarding where you are in life or where you're going to be in life. So digest what I'm about to say. This is from God to you. I don't just speak my mind. I don't speak about myself. I, I put a video up on social media a while ago. One of my friends watched it and he texted me. He was like, was that about me? <laughs> I was like, no, buddy. I, I'm just preaching the word. I, I ain't got nobody in mind. I'm not third person. I'm not self-aggrandizing or lashing out at people. <laughs> I'm just trying my best to preach the Word of God. And He tells me what to say. And when we pray, He does that. But loneliness is a topic of conversation. And today, by the Spirit, I want to challenge your interpretation and perspective of loneliness. The way you look at it. Because a lot of people look at it as something that, well, obviously, we don't want anything to do with it. Nobody wants to be alone. I don't want to be alone. <laughs> I don't want to sit alone at, my, at the lunch table in the cafeteria where everybody else is talking and sitting together. Technical interruption. <laughs> Loneliness is... Something none of us want to endure. We don't want it. But I want to challenge today, like I said, your perspective of loneliness, hopefully 10, 15 minutes. God help me. I'm not good at that. I'm going to quote from memory a few passages of Scripture. That will be the headline of this message that I'm going to give to you. Listen to what I'm saying. This is crucial for where you are in life because I've been where you are. I remember when I was a teenager. I remember the pressure. I remember... Two passages of Scripture, they might not make sense when you first hear them. I'll try my best to describe them. Number one, out of the book of Genesis, chapter 2, the very genesis of humanity, when God first made man and woman, God made the man first. And God saw the man that he was alone in the garden. And God said, it ain't good for that man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. So God went down and he put him to sleep and did surgery on him and pulled a rib out and he made a woman. <laughs> and he said, there... A man's not alone anymore. Proverbs chapter 21, God said it's not good for man to be alone, so he made a woman. And the epitome of companionship, the ultimate expression of the lack of loneliness, is that union, man and woman, marriage, holy matrimony, where God intertwines one soul to another, one body to another, man and a woman brought together as one till death do them part, and you're never alone again and for the rest of your life, at least you hope not. Obviously, it's an unpredictable, evil world. But Solomon says this in the 21st chapter of Proverbs. I'm going to tie this to that second chapter of the book of Genesis. Solomon said, it's better to dwell alone in the corner of a housetop than to live with a brawling woman in a wide house, you could say a mansion, a castle. Solomon says you'd rather live in an attic by yourself than to be married. Remember, marriage is the ultimate expression of love and the lack of loneliness. And then Solomon seems to contradict what God said. And Solomon says you'd be better off being alone than if you were somebody who would argue and fight and make your life a nightmare. The ultimate expression, companionship, I'm not alone, I've got my wife, <laughs> I've got my best friend, you hear him say, the husband and wife, my best friend, 
And then Solomon contradicts God seemingly. And he says, no, it's better off. You're better off alone. Now, he doesn't contradict him. God said it's not good for man to be alone. Solomon said it's better for man to be alone. And Paul went on to say it's better that you are alone. So it sounds a little contradictory, but it's not. And by the way, in passing, side note, there is somebody for you. There is somebody, not of the same gender, of the opposite gender that God created you for, that's going to love you till death do you part. And your job is not to seek everybody and talk and text to everybody. Your job is to get alone with God and say, who is it that's going to not let me be alone for the rest of my life? And by the way, you were created for that person. One person. God made you for one person. Don't look at social media, these individuals who have millions of followers and think you've got to look like that. Don't look in the mirror. And don't, you don't like what you see when you look in the mirror. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're not meant to marry yourself. <laughs> Do you take this, man? <laughs> There's one person you're meant to be attractive to and they will love you and you'll catch their eye and they're going to like the way you look. <laughs> no, not everybody's got to like the way you look. Not even you. If you don't like the way you look, don't worry. You weren't made for yourself. <laughs> you were made for God and you were made for one person. Let the whole world have their standards of beauty. God didn't make you for the world. One person. Take your insecurity. Get rid of it. God made you for one person. But the union of marriage is the ultimate expression and experience of the lack of loneliness. More than a brother and a mother, the two being one, husband and wife, you're not alone. We're talking about loneliness. Listen to what I'm saying. I know you've been through a lot tonight. You're tired. I'm tired. Oh, Lord, running out of time. But in spite of all that, the Bible says, seeming to contradict what God says, and He's not. But it says you're better off alone if, if that union is going to bring misery. If that union is going to produce an ultimate loneliness, a greater loneliness than if you were alone. Solomon said you're better off alone if that person's going to make your life a living nightmare. So loneliness then becomes preferred versus the ultimate deterrent to loneliness, marriage. <laughs> Solomon said it's better to be alone than to think you're not alone. Now think about this. What I'm saying, that I'm challenging the perspective, and this is what God gave me to tell you. This is the truth you need to understand. Better. He didn't say good. It's not fun to be alone. It's not easy to be alone, but it's better sometimes, not all the time. Better sometimes. I know what it's like to be in high school. Everybody wants to be popular. You want to fit in. You don't want to be. That is the ultimate deterrent to potentially godly behavior in that social atmosphere of high school. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be that weird kid sitting alone. I don't want to be alone. But apply, apply this truth and principle to your life where you're at because this is where a lot of people fall right where you're at right now. That's right. This is where a lot of people where you're at in life right now lose it and I've seen it happen. Right. I was there. The peer pressure. Drink this beer. Drink this alcohol. Take this shot. Smoke this joint. I don't know what you guys are dealing with now. Lord have mercy. It's worse than whatever I dealt with. I feel so sorry for you guys. The devil has aimed at your generation probably more than he has any other in, in our history. He's gunning for you guys. We got, we got a few more here, thank God. <laughs> Some latecomers. But this is where so many have fallen. They lost it all and they compromised. And you can even see that in biblical characters. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be that weird kid who goes to the party. Everybody else is drinking, so I just drink because everybody's doing it. I don't want to be the one who's not doing it alone. Loneliness. 
Because we don't want to be alone. And it's one of the main phobias of our time. I'm popular. I've got more followers. I'm not alone. I'm not that weird guy that everybody rejects. I'm not that person that nobody wants to be with. When God called me to preach His Word, I know there was a lonely road ahead of me. And it has lived up to the billing. I didn't know it before I picked up the Bible and started trying to do stuff for God. I thought I was a little popular. Maybe I was. I, who knows? Who cares? Forget it. But you'll be rejected. You'll have to walk alone if you don't conform to a certain degree to the crowd. And the pressure's there, and you guys are facing it maybe more than anybody else has. But the Bible says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to life. <laughs> I traveled down a lonely road and no one seemed to care. Better alone. Think about what I'm saying. I'm challenging the perspective, the consensus on loneliness. <laughs> the deterrent. Nobody wants it. But Solomon says even against the ultimate expression, there's certain things you're better being alone at. You're better being alone in certain circumstances. Why? Why? Because as illustrated in the illustration of marriage that Solomon used, you will prefer loneliness to misery. You will prefer loneliness to addiction, to bondage, and to the ultimate death in hell that it leads to if you follow the wrong road. <laughs> and the road to hell is broad, it's well populated, and the majority of people travel it, unfortunately. Think about the prodigal son. He followed that, that broad road. He wanted friends. He wanted to fit in. He wanted to play beer pong with the rest of them. <laughs> Whatever they're doing. I don't even know what you, the kids are doing now. I've been out of school for too many years. But he had friends. But the Bible says when his substance ran out, he ended up alone and he was sitting in mud with a bunch of pigs as his friends. And he was all alone. But he went down a path in a direction where he thought he wasn't going to be alone, but it ended up making him more alone than he ever would have been before. And I guess he could have used the words of Solomon. He could have known them. You're better alone right here, so you're not alone right there. You guys are going to live in a short period of your life, four years, that isn't going to matter. I've been out of school 15 years, went by in the blink of an eye. In those four years, you can make decisions. I've seen it happen. Listen to what I'm saying right now. Where you choose to try to fit in with a crowd because you don't want to be alone. But it's going to lead you down a road where you're going to end up alone and miserable. And it could lead you, God forbid, to eternal hell. There is a place called hell. We're all going to leave this life. And maybe the road to heaven is narrow. It's not as popular in this world. Maybe it's less traveled. But if it means you've got to walk alone sometimes, it's a better choice in the big picture. The second reason why I'm better alone, because you're never alone on that road. Right. You're never alone. He was saying it. I've got a friend. I've got a friend. His name is Jesus. <laughs> His name is Jesus. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid, whatever the song says, of the dark. Walk on through the rain. Come on, guys, listen to what I'm saying. You're at the party. <laughs> don't go to those parties, by the way. Make that decision. <laughs> don't go to those parties. You're in, you're in the social setting of, of social media, even. The pressure's going to come. And where a lot of people lose it, and they make decisions that impact them for the rest of their life negatively, is that the fact that they don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. Loneliness is not always a bad thing. Because sometimes you take that narrow road, you choose a little bit of loneliness, it leads you to life in the end. But those who walk the broad road end up alone. And there's no greater loneliness than hell. Those who walk the narrow road choose loneliness, let's say, they always have a friend. They're never alone. 
and we end up in heaven in the end. That's the better choice. Better, better, better. Paul said, all men forsook me, but the Lord stood with me. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you always. Through my darkest days that I've lived, when people walked away, Jesus stayed. Jesus stayed. And Jesus has always been with me. People will reject you. They'll walk away from you. Jesus Christ is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he said, I'll be with you always to the end of the age. And I'll never leave you or forsake you. Those three Hebrew boys decided it was better to burn than to bow. It's better to go against the crowd and stand alone and face potential death by fire because it's better, <laughs> because God is better. When you face the temptation, when you face the pressure, and now you guys are facing it like I never did, like, like few did in my day. Everybody knew what gender they were when I was in school. <laughs> that, was not a, that was not a debate. A man's a man, a woman's a woman. That stuff is not controversial. It's not controversial to say that. God made you the way He made you. You're perfectly, fearfully, wonderfully made. There's no question about it. God is not the author of confusion. Better. When you face the pressure, and some people I've seen them conform even to those sinful lifestyles because of peer pressure. Because they want to fit into a certain group and they don't want to be alone. You understand what I'm saying? This is the pressure y'all are going to face. But if you can understand that a little bit of loneliness ain't so bad after all, because after all is said and done, we're either going to be alone in hell forever, or we're going to be with the saints of God and with God Himself forever and ever, and God will never leave you, forsake you. Loneliness. You guys get what I'm saying here? Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a better way, and sometimes it is not the easy way. <laughs> Trust me, I lived a much easier life before I picked up the Bible and tried to live for Jesus Christ. It's not the easier way, but it's the better way. God said it's not good for man to be alone. Solomon said it's better sometimes to be alone. It's not good. It's, he's, not, he's not contradicting God. He's just saying, hey, you know what? <laughs> the result is better. The life is better. And God loves you guys. He loves you so much. And he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is the greatest friend I've ever found. And He walks with me and talks with me. And He'll walk with you and talk with you. He loves you. He died on the cross for you. And He'll stick with you when nobody else will. You, you have friends of this world. They're only going to be your friend if it benefits them. Jesus Christ unconditionally will stick by your side. When you're down, He'll stick, stick with you. When you're up, He'll stick with you. The world will leave you. They're fair weather. They'll take the jersey off and run away if you lose. <laughs> Jesus will stand with you no matter what. And He loves you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give it back to JP. You, you guys could be doing a lot of things on Friday night. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Let's pray. We'll give it back to your leader. Father, we love you. We thank you. Drive this truth home to these young people. Help them to understand that there's a better way. And help them, Lord, in those times of temptation and weakness to conquer that pressure to conform and to try to fit in somewhere, to understand, Lord, to see the big picture and understand there's a better way. It's not easy. But we need your strength, Lord. We need your strength. We're weak, but you are strong. Help us to live for you. And thank you for being our friend. And, Lord, more than anything, reveal that to these young people. You are with them. You are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In Jesus' name, bless them for being here. Enlarge this youth group, Lord, and let these empty seats be filled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, bro.